Hello and welcome back to our series on the basics of Azure. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about how you spin up your very first virtual machine. Let's get started. All right, here we are back on the Microsoft Azure dashboard. Once again, we're going to go back to our friend. Whenever we're creating brand new resources, we're going to go to the new button up here, a little plus. From here, we're going to create a VM, and therefore, we're going to go under Compute, and then we're going to select which operating system we would like on our virtual machine. For today's demonstration, we'll go ahead and select Windows Server uh, 2016 Data Center. As you can see, though, um, there's a number of other options, including some Linux operating systems um, and previous versions of Windows. Uh, keep in mind, too, every one of the licenses that you're going to use in Azure is going to be a data center license. No longer are you going to be dealing with some of the lesser licenses, uh, merely because since it is on a per use basis, your build on a per use basis, there's no reason to go with a lower uh, 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 license. A lower license meaning fewer virtual machines being allowed on that system. Uh, in this case, you have an unlimited number of VMs, and therefore we're going to stick with data center. So we click on data center. It's just a little bit of a description and some uh, legalese that you need to learn. You go ahead and hit create. All right, so here are your basic setup blades. These, again, are going to be familiar if you've created any other resource. Um, a lot of them tend to stay the same. Um, so first of all, for name, we'll go ahead and use DNAH Lab Test VM. Uh, you get to select which kind of disk type. Um, now, for the longest time, HDD was recommended merely as a price uh, a comparison. The price has gotten so similar, though, that as you can see, SSD is chosen as a default. Uh, I think it's a matter of time before HDD falls off. It's, uh, I imagine, still there for a lot of uh, independent software um, options. You know, if you have any particular ISV that doesn't work with SSDs, you, you still have that option of a, of a standard spinning drive. Uh, username, this would be your administrator's username on this new server environment. So it cannot be admin. Uh, that is a default rule in Azure. So for this demonstration, we'll go DH admin. Uh, enter in your password. Oh, I always forget that. It needs to be at least 12 characters. Our default password here in the lab does not quite meet that. There we are. Next, you're going to go ahead and select your subscription. Uh, this is, again, similar to every other resource. In this case, since, again, we are using a CSP subscription, you're going to uh, only have that, CF that CSP subscription as an option here. Next, you're going to choose your resource group. Once again, this is going to be uh, familiar if you've created any other resource. We're going to go ahead and choose DNH Lab Demo. And then your location. This is the physical location where your operating or where this virtual machine will be located. I'm going to go ahead and select East US, keep uh, latency low. Um, this is uh, this bottom part here, the save money, is actually something they only just recently added. And uh, we here at DNH haven't had actually a chance to, dem to demo it ourselves, but I think it's pretty self explanatory. You can save money if you already own a uh, Windows Server license. So uh, we have not actually pra uh, done this yet to actually see what the process is like. Uh, check back with us at a later date. I'm sure this is the sort of thing we're going to uh, check eventually, you know, but stand by for that. So we'll go ahead and click OK, and then we'll be able to choose our actual VM's uh, stats, or specs. Now, for anybody who's familiar with Azure, uh, with any uh, other uh, form of funding, whether it be a direct relationship with Microsoft, an open license, or what have you, um, this is actually an area where you can usually give a lot of pricing to your customer. Um, it's going to list out a number of the default systems that it, that it sees. As you can see, we're only seeing three initially, because right now we're only showing the three recommended sizes. But if I click View All, we get a pretty long list of all the different configurations of virtual machines that you can select from. Now, each one is going to have a different consumption rate. Uh, depending on the amount of RAM, size, uh, or the size of the, the number of cores, I should say, um, of the CPU. Um, and normally, that pricing information would be listed down here. In this case, since it's a CSP subscription and all of that pricing is handled by you, the reseller, this obviously can't be populated. Uh, all the margins that you determine are determined through your CSP portal. 
So for this, for the actual pricing calculator, for to actually calculate how much your VM is going to be, we recommend you, you check out the DNH control panel and you can work from there. If you need any uh, details as far as how you go about doing that, contact us at cloudsolutions at dnh.com and we'd be happy to walk you through that process. So for, again, for this demonstration, I'm just going to go with the, the least expensive one here, which is our DS1 version 2 and, and hit select. All right. Here we're going to uh, take a look at some uh, final uh, features and uh, specs that you need to check for your uh, VM. Um, first of all, is storage. Now, we uh, you may have already created a storage account for other purposes. Um, we tend to recommend that you create a unique storage account for all VMs. You can either use a single uh, storage account or multiple v uh, storage accounts. Where we recommend there not be a crossover is for any sort of um, uh, nonlinear file storage compared to the storage account that is needed for VMs, um, you can tend to run into a few complications or a few conflictions. Azure recommends that as well, considering they actually do that for you automatically. Here, as you can see, DNH Lab Demo Disks 174 uh, was the generic uh, default name that they created. If I would like, though, I could select my existing storage accounts, well, uh, as I mentioned before, which in this case we're not recommending. Um, or you create a new one and you can, uh, if I select create new as it is, I can go ahead and change the name, uh, change exactly how it's replicated and that sort of thing. But for this demonstration purposes, we're just going to leave it as the default. Next is all of your networking settings. Now, these are virtual networking settings, but they're critical uh, in order to get your, uh, your infrastructure as a service to work properly. Um, you're going to need a virtual network, a subdomain, uh, excuse me, a subnet rather, uh, and a public IP address, and a firewall. These four elements are critical. Now, depending on uh, your situation, you may not need to create these, as we have mentioned. This is our very first VM in this environment, and uh, therefore all of these network uh, resources need to be created. So we're just going to go ahead and just uh, go by defaults up and or all the way down the line here, but I wanted to point out that you see if you already have, uh, for example, a virtual network created, I could select it, which in this case I think I will for future demonstrations. Uh, subnet I'll keep by def I'll keep the default public IP I will keep default, and same with uh, the network security group. Next we have extensions. Now extensions are uh, add-on features to this virtual machine, such as antivirus, anti-spam, that sort of thing. Again, for this demonstration, we're going to make a very basic virtual machine. We're going to skip that. Moving on, we have high availability. Now high availability is an HA set. It's something that you may be familiar with on your, in your on-premise uh, uh, data centers. It is a level of redundancy for this system. It keeps it highly available for, uh, for your network um, that you're working on. Um, in this case, in Microsoft Azure, Microsoft uh, boasts a 99.95% SLA on all their VMs. However, in the fine print, you will see that they mention that only it applies when you create a high availability set. In other words, you create two VMs with the same configuration group together in the same HA set so that if one were to ever uh, fail, you have another one that would uh, pick up uh, where, where it left off. Um, by doing that, by actually manually creating that second VM, you have met the requirements for their 99.95 SLA. Um, if you do not, and you have any sort of critical failure that, that is, in your view, may uh, um, go against their, their SLA, their, their agreement, um, they will certainly check to see if you've meet, met all of their requirements, and this is one of them. Um, so it's highly recommended that you at least uh, create a HA say, set each time. So let's go ahead and do DNH Lab test HA. Uh, finally, monitoring, you can just leave all of this as default, same with uh, the diagnostic storage account. This is required on all VMs. Um, it's a very small storage account that it needs to create in addition to the storage account that will actually host the bits that are running the actual operating system. But everything else looks good. We're going to keep everything in defaults and go ahead and click OK. Finally, uh, you'll uh, be brought to the summary uh, blade. 
<clears throat> here, of course, it delivers you a summary of all the settings that you just chose. Uh, as you saw very briefly on the top here, it will show, it'll, it'll validate, you know, this actual uh, VM, this creation, uh, these lists of settings. Uh, as you can see, it says validation passed, and with that, we'll click OK. Now, as you can see under our notifications, just as last time, just as you create any resource, it will show up here uh, as a deployment is in process. But when you create a VM, by default, it also puts something right here on your dashboard representing that VM. So you can actually wait here to see when the actual deployment takes place. Now, keep in mind, VM deployments take a little bit longer than in a storage account or some other resource. You're looking at a good two, three, maybe even five minutes. So let's go ahead and wait until this deployment is done, and then we'll show you what, ha what that has actually done. All right, so there you go. So it has deployed successfully, and as you can see, that, that uh, blade changed automatically to the deployed VM blade, which is what we're seeing here now. Uh, if it doesn't, for the record, once again, if you just click on your notifications and click on the actual uh, notification showing that it's succeeded, it will bring you to this screen. Uh, but we will go ahead and get rid of that and close our notifications. Okay, so simply put, that is it. That was everything. Your VM has now been spun up. It has been deployed. And all you merely need to do is click Connect. It will attempt to download a RDP file, a remote desktop uh, file. You hit Open, Connect. Uh, in this case, we're going to connect to it as the login that we created, DNH admin, which I've done previously. Um, so if this is the first time you're logging in, you potentially will have to go under More Choices uh, depending on which Windows operating system you're working on here, and uh, connect using a different account. In our case, so though I'm going to connect using DNH Admin. Go ahead and enter my password. Yes to uh, accepting the certificates. And there we go. That is now connected to our virtual machine that is connected in our Azure network. And it, as uh, for all intents and purposes, can be uh, uh, configured from this point forward as if you are sitting right in front of the server itself. So there you have it. That was your pretty much straightforward, simplistic how to create a virtual machine in Windows Azure. So hopefully you found some uh, benefit out of this. Of course, there are a lot of other features and functions uh, to uh, when dealing with Azure, which we are planning on addressing one at a time. So please uh, come back and check out further installments of this series as we talk about the basics of uh, Microsoft Azure. And until then, have a great one.